This one is going to be a down and dirty way to analyze ABGs. And this is just for tests. Uh, you're pretty much you're given uh, ABG values and you have to figure out what it is. All right. I'm not going to go deep or I'm not going to go into any at all of the pathophysiology behind ABG analysis. Uh, that's we can spend hours on that. If you want to get that, go to MCRIT, listen to Scott Weingart's mastery on ABG analysis. We're really just going to say you're studying for your CC EMTP, you're studying for your FPC exam, and you need to figure out the ABGs. They put the numbers in front of you, and you got to figure it out. Well, how do we do it? All right. Well, the first thing we got to do is know our normals. The books will say that your pH is normally 7.35 to 7.45, which another way of saying that is 7.4 plus or minus 0.05, which makes 7.4 your absolute medium norm, all right? 7.35 to 7.45. Anything greater than 7.45 is considered alkalosis. Anything less than 7.35 is considered acidosis, right? But you got to take that a step further and you got to think, you got to look for your normal acidic quote and your normal alkalytic, right? So if you have a pH of 7.38, that's within the normal range, but it's on the acidic side of normal because it's less than 7.40. For your CO2 and your bicarb, your CO2 is 35 to 45. Easy to remember because that's the same as your pH, 0.35 to 0.45. <clears throat> right? um, even though it's really not, you're going to think of your CO2 as acid. All right? The more CO2 you have, the greater the acidity level is of the respiratory system, right? Think metabolic, pH, respiratory, CO2. All right, those are your two components that we're looking at. So if you have a, a CO2 greater than 45, it's acidic. If it's less than 35, it's alkalinic. Your bicarb levels, we're going to be using 22 to 26. Um, some books may differ, but 22 to 26 is a, is a pretty good value of bicarb. We're not going to be using base excess in this lecture. We'll talk about that in another time. All right. So just like your CO2, if CO2 is greater than 45, it's acidic. Your bicarb, if it's less than 22, it's acidic. All right. Your bicarb represents your metabolic processes of alkalinic. So if you have less alkalinic, you're going to be more acidic. So less than 22 is acidosis. Greater than 26 is alkalosis, right? So those are your norms. So moving on, we always got to think of the golden rules of ABG, right? Golden rule number one, for every 10 millimeters of mercury change in CO2, the pH will change 0.08 in the opposite direction. Not so important that we remember those absolute numbers, but we have to remember that it goes in the opposite direction normally. For every change in bicarb of 10 milliequivalents, the pH will change 0.05 in the same direction, all right? That is a concept that we have to get down. In other words, remember Rome, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. All right, 10 millimeter change of CO2, the pH will change in the opposite direction. So if the CO2 goes up, you could expect the pH to go down and vice versa. If the pH were to go up, you can expect the bicarb to go up. All right, Rome, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal equal. So we're going to talk about these four bad boys, right, that we have to worry about. Well, we have respiratory acidosis, and we all know about respiratory acidosis. We've all had patients with it. When we think respiratory acidosis, we're thinking of the causes of it, you know, failure to get CO2 out of the lungs. Uh, they can't remove the CO2 out of the lungs, bronchospasm, COPD, uh, VQ mismatching, pulmonary edema. All those sort of things will cause respiratory acidosis. And just a basic way of thinking about it, if your pH is less than 7.4 and your CO2 is greater than 45, well, bingo, according to golden rule number one, you have respiratory acidosis, right? So the second guy here is respiratory alkalosis, right? You have a pH greater than 7.4, but the CO2 is less than 35. That would define respiratory alkalosis. Again, thinking of causes when you have your patient, you're thinking tissue hypoxemia, anoxia, anemia, increased... Uh, Oxygen demand, uh, gram-negative sepsis will cause respiratory alkalosis, salicylic poisoning, and that is classic for FPC and CCMTP tests. They always talk about aspirin poisoning and what's the most common acid-based disturbance. Your answer is always respiratory alkalosis. Uh, mechanical hyperventilation and anxiety will cause respiratory alkalosis as well. All right. The third guy here is metabolic acidosis, um, and that's just generally your pH is less than 7.4 and your bicarb is less than 22, right? Those will define your metabolic acidosis, right? We're thinking about our golden rules again. Golden rules number two. That is your golden rule, right? So when we're thinking about it, we got increased acid production, lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, renal failure, 
um, poisonings can cause it, decreased bicarb, and of course your diarrhea, hyperchloremia, and, and, uh, and uh, renal tubular acidosis for your, for your testing purposes. Um, metabolic alkalosis is going to be your pH is greater than 7.4 with a bicarb of greater than 26. Right? So those all kind of define your four bad boys. right? And of course, your causes of metabolic alkalosis will be your GI loss, vomiting, or, uh, GI loss of chloride, vomiting, NG suctioning, diuretic therapy, steroids, and uh, antacid poisonings can cause metabolic alkalosis as well. right? So this is not mine, but I adopted it. I love it, all right? This is the best way to determine your ABG values, all right? Is a six-step method, right? Is the pH normal? The first thing you're going to do is look at the pH, see if it's normal. Then you're going to look at the CO2. Then you're going to look at the bicarb. After you do that, you're going to match the CO2 or the bicarb with the pH, right? We're thinking Rome. We're trying to match the CO2 with the pH to see if they're going in the opposite direction. Or we're matching the bicarb to see if they're going in the same direction. Does the CO2 or the bicarb go in the opposite direction of the pH, right? That's your fifth step. That's going to tell you the answer. After that, we're going to look at our PO2 to make sure our pH is not hypoxic and O2 saturation as well, right? All right, so step one, analyzing the pH. Well, the first step is to always look at your pH. We already talked about the normal, blood pH 7.4 plus or minus 0.05, right? If it falls below 7.35, it's acidic. If it rises above 7.45, you have alkalinic, right? If it falls in the normal range, 7.35 to 7.45, it might be normal, but we have to label what side of the 7.4 falls on. Does it fall on the alkalinic side of normal, or does it fall on the acidic side of normal? All right. So 11, uh, lower than 7.4 is normal acidic. Higher than 7.4 is normal alkalinic, right? So we just looked at our pH. Now we got to look at our CO2. That is our second step. CO2 is 35 to 45. We all know that. Below 35 is alkalinic. Uh, above 45 is acidic. Now we're analyzing the bicarb. Third step, normal HCO3 levels for bicarbs, 22 to 26 MEQ per liter. If it falls below 22, it's acidic. If it falls above 26, it is alkalitic. Now we're going to match the CO2 or the bicarb with the pH, right? We're going to determine what we are looking at. If the pH is acidic and the CO2 is acidic, then the acid base disturbance is being caused by the respiratory system, all right? Key to get down. Think about what that's saying. If your pH is acidic, meaning let's say your pH is 7.1, we all know that's acidic. The lower the pH gets, the more acidic I get, okay? The lower my pH gets, the more hydrogen ions I'm hanging on to, so I become more acidic. So if the pH is 7.1 and the CO2 is acidic, meaning it's greater than 45, it has to be a respiratory problem. Therefore, that has to be respiratory acidosis. It's doing what you expected it to do. If the pH is alkalitic and the bicarb is alkalitic, then it has to be metabolic in nature, right? Where the, the, the components are doing what you expect it to do, all right? So step five, does the CO2 or bicarb go in the opposite direction of the pH? If it does, there is compensation. All right, that's a very important concept to get down when you're when you're analyzing these things, right? So if the pH is acidic, right, we got a pH of 7.1, and the CO2 is acidic, right? So we have a CO2 of 60, and the bicarb is alkalitic, all right? We have compensation, right? Why is the bicarb alkalinic and the pH is acidic? Well, that's because we have renal compensation. This still makes um, this still makes a respiratory component, meaning uh, pH is 7.1 and your CO2 is 65, they're going in the opposite directions. That's what they're supposed to do. So therefore, we have respiratory acidosis. Then we look at the bicarb. If the bicarb is alkalitic, it shouldn't be alkalitic. So therefore, we have metabolic compensation. That's how you determine that. So the CO2 matches the pH, making it primarily respiratory. And the HCO3, the bicarb, is going in the opposite direction of the pH. Therefore, there is compensation in the metabolic system. After that, we're looking at the PaO2 and the O2 sat to make sure they're not hypoxemic. So, in other words, right? Each ABG has three names, right? First, middle, last name. First name, fully compensated, uncompensated, partially uncompensated. That's what gets the most people, but we'll go over that. Second name, metabolic or respiratory. Third name, acidosis or alkalosis. All right, so let's start with the last name. What's the pH? 
All right, question number one, what is the pH? If it's above 7.4, your name's alkalosis, period. Write it down. Remember it. That's, you, you've already, you're already one-third done. If it's above 7.4, last name is alkalosis, period. All right, if, this, if, the, if the, the pH is below 7.4, then your last name is acidosis, all right, period. Now let's do the middle name, all right, that's easy. We have to remember that Rome, remember that that mnemonic keeps coming up. If the pH and the CO2 are doing what they're supposed to, the middle name's respiratory, period. If you have a high pH and a low CO2, it's respiratory. If you have a low pH and a high CO2, it's respiratory. No questions asked, no more pass and go, collect your $200, it's respiratory. If the pH and the bicarb are doing what they're supposed to do, the, meta, the name is metabolic, meaning if your pH is high and your bicarb's high, it's metabolic. If your pH is low and your bicarb's low, it's metabolic. All right, period. So now the first name, compensation, right? Again, we're looking at the pH and the CO2. If they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, then there is compensation. That's all we're looking at, right? Same thing with the bicarb. If they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, it is compensation. So, for example... <clears throat> you got you got you're taking a test. This is what you get here. You got a pH of 7.31, your PCO2 is 55, and your bicarb is 35, right? So looking at the pH or step one, we already know that this is acidic. So our last name has to be acidosis. Our second step is to look at the CO2. It's 55. Is that high or low? That's high. That means that that's also acidosis. So I have an acidotic uh, pH and I have an acidotic CO2. They're going in opposite directions. Rome, respiratory opposite. This has to be respiratory acidosis. All right, has to be. Now I look at my bicarb, it's 35. Is that too high or too low? Well, normal is 22 to 26. 35 is greater than 26, so it's too high, right? It's going back to Rome, metabolic equal. I would expect my bicarb to go down with the pH. This should be below 22, but it's not. It's above 26, so therefore, I have renal compensation, right? So therefore, this has to be compensated respiratory acidosis, all right? pH is low, CO2 is high. They're doing what it's supposed to do. It has to be respiratory. The bicarb, no, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It can't be metabolic. But is the bicarb normal? It's high. Therefore, we have compensation, right? If the bicarb is going in the opposite direction of the pH, you always have renal compensation, right? So check this out times two. You have a pH of 7.31, PCO2 25, bicarb 20, right? Looking at the pH, 7.31 is low, right? So we have acidosis, we know the last name already. Step two, PCO2 is 25. Is that too high or too low? That's too low, right? Bicarb, we're looking at the bicarb. 20, is that too high or too low? That's too low. Now we're trying to match them, right? We're trying to match what we got here. I would expect, my CO2 to go high in this situation with a low pH. Rome, respiratory opposite. It's not going high. Now I look at my bicarb. My pH is going down. So is my bicarb. 7.31 is acidotic. HCO3, your bicarb, is less than 22. So therefore, it's low. They are matching each other. Therefore, this has to be metabolic acidosis. All right? Look at your CO2. Is it normal? No. Your CO2 is not normal. Is the bicarb doing what you expect it to? Yup, therefore it has to be metabolic. The CO2 is not normal, therefore there has to be respiratory compensation. So this is a respiratory compensated metabolic acidosis, right? And last but not least, that whole fully versus partially compensated thing, that is so easy because you're only looking for one thing, right? The last two examples were partially compensated only because the pH was not normal. Okay, that's it. If the pH is normal, you have full compensation. So it's fully compensated. That's it. So let's look for this example. pH 7.35, your CO2 is 47, and your bicarb is 27. You're on a test, they're asking you to diagnose your ABG analysis, right? pH, is it high or low? It's normal, right? But it's on the acidic side of normal. So therefore, it's acidic. We label acidic. PCO2, uh, 35 to 45. It's high, right? Bicarb, 22 to 26. The bicarb's high, right? So looking at your pH, it's normal, but it's on the low side of normal. The CO2, is it doing what you expect it to do? Yes, right? pH is dropping, CO2 is going up. 
So therefore, this is respiratory acidosis, okay? Respiratory acidosis. Both are acidic. Therefore, it has to be respiratory acidosis. Your bicarb is a little high, right? 22 to 26. You would expect the bicarb to go in the same direction as your pH, but it's not. Therefore, it's at a normal range. I have metabolic compensation, okay? So I know that this is a compensated metabolic acidosis. I'm sorry, a uh, compensated respiratory acidosis. Now I look at my pH. That's my last step. Is it normal? Yes. So therefore, I have a fully compensated metabolic acidosis because that pH and the bicarb now have worked together so well that has now made the pH in its normal range. Okay? That's it for this. If you want to keep watching, I'm going to have some examples. I'll show you some uh, websites that you can go to that will really help you in, uh, in learning these, this stuff. Until next time, see ya!